Lab 8 is a string me methods lab, and what I'm going to do is just get started on running the code that's here. I've already built a string methods project. Remember the name's important, capital S, capital M. Put your name in here. I just pasted all the green code over here in NetBeans, and I'm going to run it. First thing to notice, uh, it says enter a string to send it first, and it's running. You can see a little bar that says running here. Just go send ABC, and it says the result of first is ABC. Let's look at where that comes from. So here's where I print enter a string. Here's where I read it in into S1, and then S2 gets the value that first returns. We'll look at first after this. And the last thing we do is print out that value inside S2. I don't need the string S2. There's another way to do this. I'm just going to put the method call itself right there. I realize this print statement is getting a little bit crowded. All right, so what I'm doing here, I'm printing out the results of now first is inside the string s1 is the actual value you entered and then the result is concatenated with whatever first returns to us so let's go ahead and look at what first returns now if I put the cursor over first it highlights in yellow and it will highlight every other occurrence of the first method remember first is a method because it's followed by parentheses so let's go look at the first method it's right here and look at that it returns just an empty string uh, let's return the letter a instead of the empty string it's much more exciting run it again i'm going to type abc uh, now what's first supposed to do return the first letter of s as a string here's the string s uh, and look at that, we sent ABC there and it returned A. So it looks like everything is working great. Let's go ahead and run it again. I'll send it my name. So it should be looking at a C, but the result of first is A. It should have picked off the first letter, which is C. Uh, I don't have any code in here to pick off the first letter C. It always returns A. Let's go ahead and make a string. Now this string, I could just set it to A and then return result. Uh, however, it's going to function exactly like it did before. All right, what we're going to do here is actually grab, so the string S, I put the cursor over here. You see it highlighted in yellow. It's maybe a little hard to see, but it's highlighted in yellow. It's not the same as a string that was up here. It's a copy of it. It's a new string. That's a copy of the value in that string. So I'm, all, I'm just going to keep typing in S when I run this in the future. Or no, keep typing in Chris when I run this in the future. And C is the letter I want. So let's go ahead and use one of the methods on S. So S is a string. If I type S dot, this is all the methods I have on it. And we can try some of these uh, let's go substring is the one we want to use and I totally oh wow it's taking a long time all right very exciting part of the video okay wow that's a long time to just put out that right there all right so that's a substring that starts at the begin index right there And if I want to look at that list again, I'm just going to type s.sub. This is everything that begins with the prefix sub, so substring. There's two substrings and a subsequence. I want to look at the second substring. Returns a string that is a substring of the string. Substring begins at a specified begin index and extends to the character at the end index minus one. It's hard to read because it breaks across the line, but it's end index. And then the minus one's on the next line right there. Thus, the length is, oh my goodness. Hopefully, it looks better on your screen. I've also made this very big so you can read it. All right. 
I'm going to do substring 1 comma 3 and just go ahead and run it. I'm running with F6. It saves automatically. All right, so this grabbed the HR, which is right there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to keep using Chris because I want to be consistent here. And I can look at the different uh, positions of the characters. And it's going to start at index 1, which is, here's 1, the H is above index 1, which is exactly the first letter we got out. It ended at index 3, which is the index for I. However, it actually ends at the index minus 1, so it ends here at R. I'm going to just try to grab the H. So we're going to go from 1 to 2 and run. And there we go, we grab just the H. So that's pretty good. I'm not going to show you how to grab the C, but you can probably figure that out from what you see on the screen. What I'm going to do is actually cause uh, an error. Let me go from 1 to 4. Now because I keep sending in the same um, word Chris each time, let's stop this from running. I want to save a little time. Yes, I'm sure I want to stop it. All right, I'm not going to ask for input. I'm just going to set, I'm going to hard code in that S1 is always going to be Chris. And then when I'm done testing, I'm going to uncomment out this line and I'm going to delete this line 23. This will just make things run a lot faster. I recommend doing this. All right. And because I'm missing a return, um, uh, let me go ahead and add that in so it's more readable. F6 to run. All right. So the result of is HRI. So if I want to grab everything to the end, I have to go from 1 to 5. And that grabs everything to the end. Uh, now, if I run this again, no, oh, I didn't change the input. Uh, let me go, Chris C. It won't grab the C at the end. Uh, if I do want to go all the way to the end, like I could change here to six. Uh, however, that only works because. Uh, this has enough letters. If I delete the C, we're going to have a problem because I'm trying to substring longer than the number of letters I have. So I no longer have the C, which would be at position 5. So we're about to see an exception. Boom. All right. Let's shrink that down. Check bounds begin end. So it was the end value is too big. Uh, so I don't want to make it too big. I don't know how long the string is going to be. So there's a nice way to handle that. I'm going to create a variable called length. And I'm going to just use that value right there. So however long s is, it's going to use that many characters. So I sent in Chris and look at that. Boom, it got H-R-I-S from Chris all the way to the end. Let's go ahead and add a C, run it again. That's gonna go all the way to the end. I have a bunch more, longer word. There we go, okay. That should get you started here, and this length is what you're going to need when you come down and properly do last. 